you know instantly that this is another nice normal pancreas because you could see both the darker lobular exocrine uh, architecture of the pancreas and you can also see areas like here 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 and maybe here which are classical for uh, islets of langer hands as well as you know the uh, islets are the endocrine portion of the pancreas they contain alpha cells beta cells uh, and other types of cells and classically the alpha cells secrete glucagon and the beta cells secrete insulin but what i want you to do is just take a good look at a couple of these islets here and notice generally although this is not the prep best preparation in the world but I would like you to notice generally what islet cells look like. They look like just about any other endocrine kind of cell. Kind of cuboidal, a rich vascular supply, very uniform, very round. They're not forming asini, but they generally are forming these little uh, balls or nests of uh, islets. Let's go to another one if we can quickly. Uh, did we miss it? We probably did, so let's go to another one. And if I miss it again, yeah, here's another part of, uh, no, I don't think that's an islet. Here's another part of an islet over here. It's a small part of an islet. I'd like to get one that was a little bit bigger. I thought I saw a nice islet a little bit out here. And I think I do. Here's a nice islet. Let's zoom in on it. It seems to be the best looking one so far. Once again, take a quick mental picture of all these red areas being richly vascular capillaries. And the cells are very uniform, round, small classical cells. You can't tell whether alpha cells or beta cells unless you do some special stains. Now look up here in the northeast. We've been playing around here in the southwest with all these little lobules and asini. But notice in this pancreas there is a whole well delineated area up here which is totally different from the rest of the pancreas. And you'll be able to see that as I zoom down on the whole specimen. This was our pancreas in question with all the islets. And this area out here was the tumor or other type of tissue cell in question. So let's look at it. The reason why I ask you to take several quick pictures of the islets with your mind is because this looks like a gigantic islet, an islet that's maybe a million times bigger than it should be. And even though it's a tumor, please note that the cells look exactly like the cells do within the normal islets of Langerhans. They're small, they're round, they're uniform. Some of them have nucleoli. They have a good amount of cytoplasm. They may not be perhaps as vascular as the normal islets, but I bet you no matter what part of this tumor we go to now, we can see very much the same pattern. There's a different part. There's a different part. This has all the classical features of normal islets of Langerhans, uh, cytologically, except it's a tumor. So this is an islet cell tumor. And as you might guess, if it was endocrinologically active, it would produce what normal alpha cells or beta cell uh, would produce. For example, if it was a um, beta cell proliferation, you might expect it to produce insulin, and then we call it an insulinoma. If it was an alpha cell proliferation, it might produce glucagon, so then we could call it an uh, glucagonoma. And that's the general principle for uh, islet cell tumors of the pancreas. Uh, they are generally all benign. They are generally functional. And of course, if they are functional, as you know, they're more likely to be benign. And the re besides of all the nuclear features making us uh, know that this one is benign, the other thing I want to point out here 
is look how very, very, very well delineated this thing is from the surrounding pancreas. Do you remember with the malignancy of the pancreas, how all of those uh, little glands were infiltrating through the fibrous tissue? Well, here they stop dead. They don't infiltrate anything at all. And that's another reason why this is benign. And I thank you very much.